What, what are yeah. your thoughts about equipment for storytelling? Equipment, I think it's two things. It's one, your budget. I think that's probably the most limiting factor right off the bat. If you have $500 or you have $5,000, you're going to be in, in the market for very different kinds of equipment. But I would say budget one is everybody has some sort of, well, it's, I should say most of us have at some, you know, budgetary restrictions that, I mean, I looked at a camera yesterday that I thought, oh, this will be really great. I'd love to have this. And then I looked at the price and it was $10,000 for the body only. And I, know I was which, like, I know which camera was, you were probably looking at there. It was a Leica M10R. Exactly. I was like, what? That's more than that price for that one camera is more than all the camera equipment I own. All the lenses and bodies and all the systems are less than $10,000. So I looked at that and I was like, for me, uh, that's a price prohibitive. I'm not going to buy that camera system. But primarily the, the most important factor is what are you willing to actually carry all the time? And that right there eliminates about 80% of all the camera equipment out there. So I think... Um, Affordable cameras that are small and amazingly functional, for me, Fujifilm is the best system out there. Um, Fujifilm is ergonomically, menu-wise, the most intuitive, simplest to use, tiny cameras, very capable, and also affordable. I think Sony also makes some really good small cameras that are really functional and great. I have a Sony a7C that I use all the time, mostly for motion, and I use the Fuji cameras for stills. I shot Leica for decades, you know, and I and I absolutely love Leica. I think they're a very, very unique camera system. I think if you're looking for a camera system that has potentially made more historical photographs in the history of photography, I think you'd be hard pressed to find anything better than the M series Leica cameras. I've never owned a digital Leica. All my Leicas are film cameras and I, I love them. But I, the reason I was looking at the M10 was I was like, well, I've never had a Leica digital. So Maybe I will, you know, if I had one, there you go, M M2 or M3. If I had one, maybe I, you know, this would be great. I would love to have this. And then I looked at the price and I thought, is it worth me spending? You know, I think the cheapest like I looked at was 7,000 and the most expensive was 10. And I just thought that's not, I can't do that. You know, the, you know, I just bought a motorcycle. The motorcycle, my bicycle, and my new fishing equipment is still combined all less than a, like a camera body. So I was like, you know, this isn't going to work for me. Uh, but whatever it is, your budget is going gonna, is gonna to lead you in a direction. And then find something that is small enough that every single day when you leave the house, you say to yourself, this is with me and it's a natural part of, of me being in the world. When I see people buy like even a big mirrorless camera or they'll buy a mirrorless camera, but the lenses are like this. And I see them having that conversation with themselves when they're about to leave and they go, do I actually really want to carry this right now? If you are having to ask yourself that question, do I want to carry this? You have the wrong camera because unless you're shooting commercial assignments or editorial assignments, and that's just a necessary evil, if, if this is a hobby for you, or even if it's a, you know, you are an, an absolute driven amateur photographer, you've got to have it with you. So, I mean, I'm, that's why I love cameras like the Leica Rangefinder. I love the small uh, Fuji, the XT cameras, the X Pro cameras. And then Fuji makes a ton of even smaller cameras that have the same lens mount that are really functional fantastic cameras and um and they're they're actually quite affordable if you have equipment that you can't readily use it just you you're going to be limited to you know either you're you're going to pick up your iphone which is you know okay it has some use but it's not a camera it's not a full camera where you can control everything you need to no. or you're going to carry around stuff and get tired and Either way, it's not a fun experience. I'm with you completely. That's why I shot for so many years with this camera because it it's small. I, I didn't even have the light meter on top of it. You know, you can actually just, it, it kind of fits into your hand. So also it's not intimidating to people when you hold it up. Uh, there was a question about street photography and definitely don't have a big DSLR for street photography, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, and that's why I shot Leica for, I bought my first Leica in 1990 
And I just knew when I saw it, I was like, and, and look, let's face it, that Leica is terrible for 99% of the things that you would do in photography. You're going to shoot sports with it? No. Portraits? No. Fashion? No. Commercial stuff? Most likely no. But what that camera is designed for, which is unobtrusive reportage or documentary style photography, there has never been anything built that's any better than that camera. And so if that's what you're doing, and that's what I did for all those years, that camera was in my hand or on my shoulder or around my neck for 30 years. And it was an M4 and an M6. And I had the first one I bought was an M4P. That is the amazing thing. And so I think today you're not just limited to the Leica rangefinder. There's, you know, Sony makes a tiny camera. Fuji makes a tiny camera. Lumix makes a tiny camera. And so it is having it with you all the time and not in a bag or a shoulder bag or a backpack. It is in your hand when you're walking around. And that's really what it takes. And I catch myself, you know, I have a Shimoda backpack that has all my Sony system in it that I have with me all the time because I'm filming all the time. And the Sony, the A7C is a very small camera, but if it's in the backpack, I don't use it. It has to be out and in my hand for me to use it all the time. And so that eliminates a huge percentage of, you know, uh, what I would call flagship cameras. You know, the Sony a7 IV is an unbelievable camera, but it's also a little bigger, a little clunkier, a little heavier. And those Sony lenses are big. And so am I going to carry that around every day? No. Yeah, I hear you. Okay. Uh, how about uh, turning your story into a zine or a book? I know we've covered this ground before, but... Any tips for that? Yeah, I mean, I think anytime it comes to print, you want to start small and you want to start inexpensive and you want to break some eggs. If you are if you're new to the zine making or print making or making a magazine or a book, if you're new to that world, you have to understand what you're talking about is a language to its own. And it's a language that's filled with with smaller dialects. And you have to be proficient to make something really good. You need to be proficient at all of those. So if, if page design or graphic design, which is what you're going to utilize to make a publication, if it's new to you, then things like editing and sequencing and typography and choosing paper types and all that, it's all new. So you have to be patient and take your time. So my advice is always to start small and try to find some very in, uh, inexpensive format. I love the blurb trade book format. I love the magazine format. Those are the two least expensive gateway entryway products that I think are fantastic. And you can do a zine or a mag cloud, even a mag cloud digest, which is a, you know, an eight page mag cloud digest is a dollar 20. So that's about as cheap as you can possibly get. <laughs> Show us your examples of the, uh, you've got a few there. I know there. Okay. Now this is the eight. How many pages is that? This is a mag cloud digest. And this happens to be what I use as my business card. This is more than eight pages. This is probably 20 pages. And um, I use it as, so if I, if I meet someone I want to work with, I basically will Such give them one Such a good idea. And, and it costs yeah. about what? Two bucks? This is about six bucks. Six bucks, okay. Yeah. And the way that shipping is these days, you'll probably pay more for shipping than you will for the actual document. So my advice is, is to print multiples, you know, make do a test, do a test book, a test version, see what you like, don't like, fix the problems and then order 10, 20, 30 of them because they're inexpensive. And, you know, even if you it's a great exercise, I actually took this exact format and I did about 10 different eight page stories. So I took all these different stories I'd done and I did one little eight page publication for each story just for fun and just for practice of saying what's the most critical element from this story. What what's the copy that I need or the writing that I need to include? What's the best image for the for the cover? All of those things. And I'm constantly making tests and sample books. I probably make 10 test books for every book that I would put out into the world because uh, you know, test books, everything comes through revision. So you're, you're always trying to refine and get better. When you, Dan, do you, do you do it on your own printer or do you send it off to blurb and get, just get a, a print of it, a single image, a single print? I mostly print them myself. 
Or okay. I will sometimes, occasionally, once or twice a year, I'll send off to have a print made. Um, but I do not sell prints of my work. So I just don't, I, and I don't have anything against that, obviously. Um, I just have no interest in selling my work. So I, I, the prints that I make are primarily for my journal, and those I'll just use the printer at home. And I have a big Canon Pro 1000 printer at the house that basically sits so much that the ink gets ruined because I'm not I know. using it. I have one of those too. It's the same thing. Because if you, yeah, if you don't use it, the ink dries up and it's, it's a mess. Please subscribe and enable the bell so you don't miss any of our new shows. Like the video and please share it and leave your comments. I love hearing from you. And remember to get out and capture your own images of life.